The first question should be, good for whom? Good for the dying person or good for the larger community? Good for the caregivers? Good for favorable tax treatment? Of course, these are not separate questions. Even if we try to focus just on the dying person's good death, the other perspectives would be an influence, weak or strong, depending on the individual. It's easy to imagine a big part of a good death being no long-term, heavy-duty care by a spouse or partner. Plenty of opinions on this one. Some are absolute and unyielding. If the dying process does not contain certain clearly stipulated rituals, there is a tremendous price to pay for a long time. That's an opinion, no matter how firmly it is believed. We can think and plan all we want about a good death, however we decide to define it, and it still doesn't mean we'll get it, or that someone who never thought about dying for a second couldn't have a great send-off anyway. Our wishes and articulated directives are a factor in how death comes and goes, but that's all, just a factor. There are other factors too. So it would be nice, probably, to have the kind of death we want, but since what we get is so up in the air, the good death exercise has to mean more than the subjective experience of our final hours or minutes. Keep pushing back the time frame final days, final weeks, final months, final years. Describing your good death is really just a way of focusing on what you value or fear the absolute most in life.